Hey guys, this is Jeff here again. Um, I've got all the parts to the house now and I'm just starting to go through stuff. Uh, and I really didn't do much of an introduction in the last video. I just kind of showed you getting the bug and or looking at the bug and getting parts and stuff. So I just wanted to show you uh, some of what I got and a little bit of the story that got me here. And, uh, and we'll just go from there. So the first thing is the bug. I, I stumbled across Musty One on YouTube one night. He was uh, restoring an old Briggs & Stratton engine or something like that. He was tearing it apart and fixing it up. And I was like, oh, you know, I used to work on a lot of cars and engines and things. And ah, I should do that. I should find something to work on. And then I stumbled onto his, his uh, Volkswagen videos, the, the buses and bugs. And it's like, oh, wow, I can do that. And so I started asking around if anyone knew anybody that had an old bug or anything like that. And I found a neighbor of my dad's in Albuquerque who had one that uh, he was never going to do anything with. And, uh, and so I, I talked to him and, and we agreed on, you know, what it would take to get it. And, and uh, here I am. I don't have it here yet. It's, it's, it's going to be at the end of this month before I get it. But uh, uh, I'll start working on, on the body of the, of the bug then. But... But right now, uh, I've got an engine and I've got some other parts. I just want to take you through that, show you uh, what I've got so far and what we're going to start working with, and uh, and we'll go from there. And this this whole time, I'm learning. I'm learning some new stuff, some of the stuff I've never done before. I haven't worked on a bug since probably 1989 or 1990, so um, it's been a while. And uh, uh, I was really into old Volvos. My friend Chuck was really into bugs, and so we'd help each other work on cars. Uh, we put a new engine in overnight in his mom's uh, Toyota one time. So I uh, used to just work on this stuff a lot. And uh, I've always worked on machines and things, but I, but I, I really want to get back into building something uh, again. I've, I've been working recently on motorcycles. I re rebuilt a couple motors, motorbikes. And, uh, but really the idea of, of recording this was, was thanks to uh, Musty One and VW Darren and, and a few other people online that I've seen that, that really like working on these things. And I did in high school too. And so uh, I thought, hey, I, I could do that again. So uh, I got some stuff, I found a bug, and, and I got these other parts. I'll show you in just a second. So the first thing, of course, is the heart, the, uh, the engine. And uh, uh, I was on Facebook and looking for parts and things. There's a bunch of Facebook groups about parts and everything. And found this guy in New Mexico who was getting rid of a lot of his bug stuff, uh, a lot of his Volkswagen stuff, and he had this engine. Uh, laying around and uh, we can't, we agreed to a price um, for for everything you see here we're going to go through what, what we got here and uh, what I'm going to do with it but this turns out I was just I was just looking up this information this is an, an F1 block which is uh, uh, it's a Volkswagen block but it was not ever put into a car it was sold over the counter so this was uh, just a block that someone had bought or they, they were building an engine for a car and put all this together and he had he threw together a collection of tins and things he had this in a buggy for a while and so it's got all the bits and pieces um it's a 1600 dual point he thinks this is a 1600 maybe it's a 1641 don't even know for sure right now um and he put all this on there for me kind of put it together you can see it's a little dusty it's been a buggy um i happen to find a uh, a couple bus uh transmissions I think 002 transmissions and and I was told you know you can use that to uh, bench start an engine so I've got two of those if anyone needs another one the transmissions are full of dirt um, I don't know if they're rebuildable or not but I've got two <laughs> and uh, we put together this engine a couple things I'm kind of disappointed about uh, one is the uh, the heat risers have been cut off of this intake um, some people think that's a big deal other people don't uh, some people really like having that heat some people don't so whatever it's uh, it's done and I've got it uh, I think this is an 009 um, distributor here uh, it's got the blue coil someone told me that's that's for more oomph it's better and it's a uh, what is this a picked uh, uh, 31 picked uh, carburetor which I've also heard, heard is good. Uh, I'm kind of used to seeing 34s, but uh, you know, if it if it carburetes, I'm I'm all for it. It's got the uh, alternator uh, fuel pump, uh, even though it does have a generator set, set up. 
think there's supposed to be a cover on there. I'll find that out, I'm sure. Um, and then all the tin and everything. And uh, it was a runner. He had it in a buggy, and it worked. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it does for me. I'm going to take it all apart, though. I'm not going to take the whole engine apart, but I'm going to take off all the tin. I'm going to get down to the block, uh, the long block, and I'm just going to clean everything up, put new gaskets on everything, new plugs in there, uh, check the... Uh, check the uh, the heads and see how the torque is on all the head bolts and everything and uh, and just make sure everything is okay he said uh, the, the quote was uh, it smokes a little bit so it probably needs a, a refresh of some so some sort um, so I'll do that one of the other things is that the um, the shroud here it's not a doghouse uh, I'd really like a doghouse I think because of where I live in uh, in the southwest it tends to get fairly warm and uh, that's that's one of those things that can really affect cylinder three, especially. And then all of the uh, the flaps have been removed out of the uh, the the uh, uh, shroud here, so it doesn't have a thermostat. It doesn't have any of that system. A lot of people tell you, hey, it runs better and runs cooler without that anyway. Um, but I want to drive into the fall, you know, so a little heat would be good. The heat will still work. It just won't be as a, as efficient as it as it could be. Uh, so I might do something with that, but I know a lot of people run without them, and so I don't care. We'll see. Um, also got the uh, <coughs> the heater boxes. Um, those are in pretty good shape. It's a little, just a little greasy. And again, I'm going to take all this apart. I want to paint it. I want to do a, a kind of a, a soft restore of this. I just want to clean it up and get things get things together. Um, no idea. I know there's one heater control there but no no idea what any of that is and then a muffler you got to have a muffler uh, a lot of people put headers on there and other things i i really kind of like the pea shooter sound that foo foo foof that comes out of those guys um again there's a heat riser there and i got to looking at it and this one uh although it looks okay uh not so much so what i might do is just uh crimp these over uh, just get rid of the heat riser altogether. Uh, I, I thought, oh, I can put the, the little blocking plate on there. Well, I mean, here, let's, let's just finish it off. There, it's it's done. <laughs> it's not on there anymore. So maybe just uh, fold those over, crimp them uh, so that they're just cut off altogether, and, and I'll have, uh, have that system there. So there's the engine. It's it's pretty well intact. It's it's a runner, I was told, so I can get that together and and uh, once the bug gets gets together, I can uh, I can uh, drive it, move it around. The other thing I got is I was looking online on uh, one of the Facebook forums and uh, someone had uh, a, a box full of starters that they were getting rid of. And uh, they were doing 10 bucks a piece, and they said they all worked to just, you know, varying degrees and whatnot. A guy named Brian in Taos. And so I drove up to Taos and uh, talked to him, and, and uh, he just doesn't want any stuff laying around. So he gave me a couple starters here. Um, one should work. They're, one's short, one's long. They both fit. Uh, they both uh, hopefully will turn over. I haven't even tested them yet. He's like, hey, do you need, do you need brakes? And so he pulls out another box, uh, basically with a complete brake system here uh, for a Beetle, uh, for my year Beetle. Uh, it's got the uh, 4130 lugs, uh, front and, and rear uh, drums, uh, a lot of uh, soft and hard brake lines there, um, front and back shoes uh, for it. And then we've got a couple uh, cylinders. I don't even know what's in here. These are, uh, oh, the whole kits um, to you know, springs and, and clamps and all that stuff for, for brakes. And then in here, we've got a, uh, a new master cylinder, brand new. Uh, so yeah, I guess the, uh, the bug is getting new brakes as well. And of course, you know, to help with all this, you've, you've got to know what you're doing. And I've, I've really been watching some of uh, VW Darren's and Musty's and, and a few other uh, videos up, out there about uh, 
you know, how to kind of put back together an engine, just, just make sure it's all working right and, and together right. Uh, but I've also got, you know, the Bible. I've got the complete resource here. This was cool. This was a, uh, a copy that I found on Amazon. It's a used copy, and it's from uh, Parts Place for all VWs, Recycled Bugs Incorporated. Every page, uh, just about in this book, has a, a Parts Place stamp on it. And in the back of the book was a uh, Volkswagen uh, Home Companion uh, from Parts Place. This one's dated... Uh, 1987, which ironically is when I graduated from high school. And uh, I've probably seen this catalog uh, uh, back then when we were working on bugs. Uh, that's got everything I need. How to Rebuild Your Volkswagen, Air-Cooled Engine. Great book also, I remember this from a long time ago. Actually, Rebuilding Engines with Chuck using this book. And of course, we got a couple catalogs. No, uh, you know, Warsburg West has been around a long time. Really high quality parts. Uh, J Bugs um, also has some really nice parts and uh, financing if you want to finance your your Beetle, but uh, um, all of that will help me out in this whole adventure. Um, there's some new tires sitting over here next to the bicycle, and you might recognize a tow bar back there. That's that's how I'm going to drag it back here when I go to get it. Uh, plan is to put the new tires on. Uh, before we move it. I, I figured it'd be good to, you know, if we're going to go 100 miles or so with some good tires on there. Of course, that means I got to make sure that the brakes are free and, and it rolls. Uh, so that's going to be a great video when we get to that point and all of that. So that's where I am right now. Got all these bits and bobs and everything. I'm going to uh, be tearing into this, taking off all the tins. I want to clean them up, paint them, uh, make it look pretty, you know, make it look decent inside the engine bay. Um, clean up and paint the heater boxes and everything. May do a video on all of that. Uh, if you like watching people scrape grease off of uh, sheet metal, uh, then that's the video for you. We'll be doing that. Um, I don't know if that's a crack there. Oh, that's just, that's just oops, that's just stuff. But, uh, oh, and this, this stand. This is kind of interesting. I had a neighbor a couple years ago that was moving and uh, the truck was all packed and this was in his backyard. He says, you know, I don't know where this came from. I think it's a motorcycle or ATV lift. It, it says that, you know, on the label, motorcycle, ATV lift. I don't need it. You got a bike, you want this. Sure, I'll take that. So I took this lift and it turns out, I, I watched another YouTube video, some guys putting an engine into, into a bug with a, a motorcycle lift like this. And it's just perfect. It goes so low. It's only a couple inches above the ground. And uh, you get your bug up. And uh, I imagine, you know, in my, in my heart of hearts, that this will just slide right in. We'll just be able to come up underneath and uh, get the engine right in. So that's me rambling for about 11 minutes on uh, various parts and things and my plans. And uh, we'll be doing more videos. And, uh, you know, I'm really glad you're here uh, sharing this adventure with me, watching me do all this. I'm learning as we go. Uh, a lot of this I don't remember how to do anymore. I haven't done it for a long time, but uh, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your help. Uh, constructive criticism, criticism is always helpful. Um, you know, it's YouTube. You'll get more. But uh, if you're really enjoying this, uh, please uh, like and share and subscribe uh, to this page. And uh, we'll go on this adventure together. Thanks for joining me today. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Well, I figured since I was going to start taking this apart anyway, I might as well film some of it. I want to get the, the shroud off and some of the tin here. So I'm going to start cleaning it up. But uh, uh, you know, to get the shroud off of this, we need to do a couple things. We need to remove the, uh, the bracket off of the um, generator here. we got to get the fan belt off. And... Uh, and then there's just a couple screws on the sides there, a little bit of wiring here I want to take off. It's marked. And uh, we'll take that off and, and start getting this apart so we can get down to it and uh, clean this up a little bit. But I uh, uh, need to get the wrench for the generator, which I think is a 17, if I remember right. Of course, you know, I gotta dig for. So there's always the uh, 
the metric adjustable wrench. Oh yeah, there's a trick with a screwdriver that you can actually put a screwdriver in this little slot here and, uh, and find one of the screws that's holding on, but I actually got that off without that. And then you lose your stack of shims. That's, your, that's the cover bit there. Um, oh, there's my little shims. So there's all the little shims in there as well. But we don't need to do anything with that. We're just going to put this back like this. And then we'll take. for this, but I didn't, that's okay. millimeters it looks like on every side here. Fingers. slots in there so I didn't have to pick, take that all the way out. So good that's attached. Nothing there, but we do have a couple wires going from the oh I pulled that wire out. That's good. To the choke there. And this is going down to the oil sender, oil pressure sender. clean in here when here's a piece of grass oil cooler looks good um, looks really good actually everything's really super clean back here I'm really impressed so I'll start taking the rest of the stuff off and uh, uh, it's probably a good good reason to have a little time lapse
Okay, let's see what we got here. We got mud. <laughs> we definitely got some mud and grass on uh, side three and four here. One, same on one and two. Some mud and gunk in there. Uh, but overall, you know, it's fairly clean. Not too much down there between the cylinders, a little bit of dust and mud. I always thought that was on a little bit different direction. I always thought this was turned 90 degrees or so. Someone nicely greased the uh, fuel pump area here, but man, that's, that's just sitting there pretty gunky. And the, uh, the oil cooler isn't leaking, which is great. It's just dirty. Uh, dust, again, lots of dust. This was a buggy for a little while, but uh, it, it had some oil. There's, there's definitely oil underneath it. I don't know if you can see this with the light. Nope. But uh, there's some oil down here. It might be coming from the... Uh... Oh, that's terrible, Jeff. What are you doing? It might be coming from the... Uh... The tubes, the uh, lifter tubes, but uh, that could just be coming from the uh, little plate on the bottom there. But we'll clean this up and uh, take some brushes to it and make it a little bit more sparkly and uh, paint up the tins and the intake and uh, clean up the heater boxes and we'll get a little bit more presentable. Um, that's where I am right now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share. Uh, let people know if this is something you'd like to see. Give me suggestions. Let me know what you want to see and uh, we'll do some more stuff. Uh, maybe I'll do another little time lapse on cleaning. You all like watching people clean engines, I'm sure. And uh, we'll do some painting on this uh, here in the next week or so also. See if we can resurrect the muffler just a little bit. I know that rust isn't going to come off there. Um, some of it will, but uh, we'll get it. Yeah, so I want to clean up this engine and uh, make this tin and heater boxes and whatnot uh, look a lot better on here. Just dress it up a bit, clean up the engine. And I'm going to use a trick that uh, Musty One used in a couple of his videos. I'm going to use some uh, oven cleaner to get this grease off of all this stuff. And uh, I'm just gonna spray it on here. I got some cardboard spread out for that. Just to kind of break it, act as a uh, degreaser, if you will. And I've got a brush. <laughs> that. Uh, that I'm going to brush it down with also. So not too bad. The uh, oven cleaner definitely cleaned off the really thick grease. Um, I did have to scrape a little bit on both of these. This one was the worst. This one had a lot of caked on grease and it looks like there's some even down inside the, the heater box itself. So I'll probably have to spray some parts cleaner or something down there. Um, I'll figure out a way to take care of that. But uh, Musty One has this theory that uh, he sprays uh, bar and chain oil underneath his cars to protect them from salt and, and water. Because he says, you know, you never see an, a, a, a rusty car that's leaked a lot of oil. You know, where the oil is leaked, it's just never rusty. And, and looking at these heater boxes, this one was covered with uh, a good quarter inch of road grime and grease and dirt and just crap all over it. And it's actually shiny metal underneath. It's not rusty at all. Um, and in fact, these were uh, the same, these tins here, they were covered in grease and gross gunk and uh, there are very little rust on them at all. They're actually very, very clean. So uh, I am a musty convert here. I definitely think he's onto something. I'm not going to coat these with grease when I put the engine together, but uh, they're going to get a fresh coat of paint. I'm going to take some more degreaser and a uh, little wire brush to them, clean them off pretty good, and probably use some Rust-Oleum because it'll stick to just about anything uh, to paint these up. 
and we'll get them back on the engine. Uh, I think they turned out pretty good. I'm pleased. So another thing I want to experiment with is something else I saw online. Um, messing around with something like LimeAway or CLR and uh, God, how's that even open? And uh, oh, it takes two hands. Of course it does. Of course this little nib. There we go. CLR or uh, LimeAway and uh, spraying it on rust and then using a uh, Scotch-Brite pad to uh, remove some of that rust. And I don't really care if this is rusty, I'm gonna paint it and they all rust anyway. Uh, but I just wanted to see what we could do here with just a little bit of rubbing and uh, some lime away. Start shaking the camera like an ad too. Just to see what we can come up with here real quick. Most of it's going down underneath. But let's see here, let me just get an area kind of scoured here. I think I see good stuff. It's, uh, Let's get a paper towel here. All right, got a paper towel. And this is what we did in just a few seconds with some uh, CLR and a Scotch Bright pad. Um, not saying this muffler is the best. One of the heat risers broke off. <laughs> But it's the one I have, and uh, I'm cheap, so I'm going to use it. But it, uh, it got rid of some of that rust. Amazing. Look at that. Um, Ten minutes with a Scotch-Brite pad and CLR. Maybe let the CLR soak a little bit like it has over here. Just let it sit there and see what happens. Um, I'll show you the results when I get done. Uh, I'll probably take off the pea shooters first uh, and then clean it up best I can and uh, we'll, we'll spray paint this next.